Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to carry out a basic confirmatory factor analysis using Stata's graphical user interface. Um, I have data in the data set uh, that is uh, reflecting um, individual's responses to a set of items from a, a depression inventory. So um, it's already imported and what we're going to do is we're going to test a three-factor uh, structure. So, um, so these are the items uh, over here. These are the names of the individual items. And the three factors are negative attitudes, performance difficulties, and somatic complaints. And this is uh, partially derived from a presentation by Barbara Byrne in her book on uh, SEM using the Amos program. So to carry out our analysis, what we're going to do is we're going to go to statistics, go down to SEM, structural equation modeling, and then model building and estimation. So when we click on that, uh, this box is going to open up. And if I want to have a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of a, a bigger screen, I'm just going to do that right there. And the first step is we are, we are going to um, um, basically establish our indicator variables, which are going to be the um, measured variables or the items from our survey. So I'm going to click on this little box right here that says Add Observed Variable. And you'll notice that a uh, little box is, already appears. And so I can just kind of click these. There are actually uh, nine items that we're going to work with. So I'm just going to draw nine boxes. So there's three, uh, the third, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and the ninth. Uh, next, I'm going to click off of that and then go to this and say add latent variable. So we're going to draw out the factors. So there's factor 1, factor 2, and factor 3 right there. Next, uh, we're going to draw our, um, our uh, paths, which are going to reflect the, the factor loadings. So where it says add path, I'm going to click on this button and I can draw from um, the, our latent variable or our factor to each of the indicator variables and you'll notice that as we draw out uh, the uniqueness term is added uh, to uh, each of the indicator variables and that's just reflecting the variation in our uh, indicators that's not accounted for by the factor so, um, so we're doing that for these right here and then we'll add right here so there's one, two, and three Okay, so now we've got um, just a basic uh, uh, diagram. So now we want to add in the variable names. So um, I'll start by just uh, clicking on this button right here. And when we do this, you'll notice that this little box up here where it says variable um, is ready to go. And so I'm just going to uh, move item one right here. I can click on this. I can move in item two right here. Uh, you know, you can either type it in or you can just select. I just like to select. It's a little quicker. So there's item three, item four. Uh, we have item 11. So uh, just note that uh, we're, we're not using all the items in the scale. So we're just using a subset reflecting each of the, the proposed dimensions for this particular demonstration. There's 16 and then there's uh, 18 right there. So next we want to name our factors. So I'm going to click on the little box right here and give uh, give it a name. So I'm just going to call this, this is for negative attitudes, and I'm going to hit enter. Right here, I'm going to type in uh, performance difficulty, and oh, excuse me. And uh, well, let me see, let me just kind of select this again. There it is. So I'm going to type in performance difficulty right there. And then uh, down here, we're going to uh, select, uh, we're going to type in for somatic complaints. <coughs> And there you go. So uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to add in uh, correlations among the factors. So in the model that is um, that's being tested in her example, she used correlated factors. So I'm going to select add covariance, and then I'm going to drag down between uh, each of our uh, factors. So um, there you go. And then we're also going to add in some correlated errors. And so we're going to add in a correlated error between uh, the uniqueness for item 18 and the uniqueness for item 12. So I'm just going to draw up right here and you'll notice that the arrows kind of appear in the opposite direction. So when we draw down, the arrows appear going out to the right. If we draw up, then it goes to the left. So um, at any rate, then we're going to do um, the uh, uh, error uh, for item 18 and for item 4. So we're going to go up there and do that one. Um, and then we're going to do uh, 7. 
uh, uh, and uh, draw up to uh, item 5 and also to 4. And uh, then we are going to add in uh, 6 to 3. So we're going to go down here to 6 and then draw up to 3. And so you can see we've added in a number of uh, different um, correlated uh, errors or correlated uniquenesses. So at this point, I'm going to just kind of clear it out a little bit. And now we're, we're ready to run our analysis. So the data set actually has a complete um, you know, there's no missing data in it, and uh, so there's nothing special we have to worry about. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll go to Estimation to Estimate, and uh, the default method is Maximum Likelihood, so we're going to stick with that. Um, and then uh, we can basically just click on OK and run it, and um, there you go. And so you'll notice, first off, that uh, this is the unstandardized solution, and uh, for each factor, uh, we have one path that is uh, constrained to one, and that is setting the measurement scale of the factor in relation to one of the measured variables uh, that we're using um, from our scale. So, um, so at any rate, uh, those paths or those factor loadings are not estimated, but the others are. Um, so these are all basically unstandardized uh, factor loadings. Uh, over here, these would be, uh, in the unstandardized solution, these would all be covariances uh, between the factors and then over here we would have the covariances among the uh, uniqueness terms. So um, at any rate uh, also if we want to um, look at uh, a, a given parameter in more detail we can click on a given, that parameter and you'll notice that over here now you see the unstandardized uh, factor loading we have the standard error uh, we have uh, a z-value and the p-value that allows us to determine statistical significance um, and then you also see down here you have the standardized coefficient. Uh, uh, so there it is right there. You also get the standard error and the z-value and p-value um, right here. So at any rate, uh, you know, you, as you kind of uh, move from parameter to parameter, they all show up. So if we want to look a little bit more detailed at the output, we can kind of scroll, go, uh, go over to our standard um, stata output, and you can see that we get our... Um, you know, for the uh, measurement model here, we have item one, the coefficient, again, it says constrained, that's not being estimated. Uh, this is just a constant right here, the intercept. Uh, then we have item two right here, and so that's the loading, uh, the standard error, the Z value, and then the P value associated with that. Then we have item three uh, right here, um, and um, the same uh, deal. So you can see that all of our factor loadings that were uh, estimated are statistically significant in the model. You can also see as we uh, scroll down a bit that uh, you also see uh, the uh, variances for each of the uh, uh, items, basically the error terms or the uniquenesses, and then down here you have the covariances between um, the uh, uniquenesses as well that we have, and so you can see you know, which ones in the model are statistically significant. Now if we want to evaluate uh, the uh, you know, other aspects of model fit, we can go down to the command line and I'll just say really quickly, you can either, you can either go through the uh, statistics post-estimation option and you'll see where it says uh, specification diagnostic and goodness of fit analysis. So if you want, um, you know, uh, uh, measures at the equation level like R-square uh, goodness of fit, actually I'll just go ahead and do this now. Uh, if I click on OK right here, you'll see that you get uh, the R-square values, uh, so indicating the proportion of variation in each of the items accounted for by their respective factors. And so uh, these would essentially be your commonality estimates. And then uh, if we want to look at the uh, overall goodness of fit, we can click on this and uh, you see right here goodness of fit statistics. We can click on this right here and this, just click on all for all and then uh, OK. And so now you can see that we have uh, the chi-square um, uh, test, so this is uh, the chi-square value and, and significance level. So you can see the chi-square test is statistically significant. And historically, you know, and basically this is, uh, you know, a significance test of, of basically badness of fit, even though it's called goodness of fit test. Statistical significance is taken to indicate uh, poor fit. <clears throat> and so 
Um, but uh, you know, we, we tend to rely less on this particular test and a lot more on more descriptive indices because of the role of sample size and um, the power of this test. And, and basically, uh, given that SEM tends to be a large sample technique, um, you can have modest discrepancy uh, between the model and the data, and um, and um, uh, and so then, but you can still have statistical significance due to the large sample size. So uh, we can look at the RMSEA right here. This is a root mean square error of approximation. Um, basically, values. Uh, be between 0 and um, you know, 0.05 would be considered more optimal levels of fit. Values up to about 0.08 would be considered acceptable. So this is just right under the nose, uh, at least according to kind of conventional standards with RMSEA. Um, the baseline comparison uh, indices, the CFI and TLI um, optimal levels would be uh, you know, above, uh, you know, 0.95 or above. And um, but it, it's still acceptable, you know, 0.90 and above. So you can see both of these are indicating um, good fit uh, to the data. So overall, the model seems to be doing pretty well in terms of fitting the data. If um, if you don't want to um, go through the window, by the way, of uh, post estimation and asking for these uh, different uh, indices, you can you can just use uh, the little commands of estat and then you have EQGOF for equation goodness of fit. So if you just type in ESTAT uh, EQGOF, you get the equation goodness of fit, as I was saying. And then if you want the uh, overall uh, goodness of fit, you can just type in this uh, for these indices right here. So it's just basically ESTAT GOF comma stats and then all and then enter and there you go. So um, at any rate, uh, there's your, you know, your basic uh, model right there. Next, uh, let's rerun the analysis. But in this case, we're going to uh, just ask for, let's say, I don't want the unstandardized estimates in the actual uh, figure or, or diagram. So I can go to reporting right here and click on display standardized coefficients and values. Click on OK, and so you get that. And so uh, basically, with the standardized solution. Um, the scale of the latent variables is um, the, basically the variance is um, is uh, constrained to uh, or fixed to one, and uh, that allows all of the uh, factor loadings to be uniquely estimated. Um, if we click on you know again a, a given um, coefficient right here, you can see um, uh, or uh, each of the factor loadings you can see. Uh, that we still get the unstandardized uh, loading standard error z value and p value as we did before, um, but now you can see in the um, the diagram that we actually have the um, standardized loading that's presented. So uh, you can see up here this first one, the unstandardized uh, loading is uh, one, and that's because it's been fixed to one. So there, there you go. So it's the same solution, it's just that what's appearing in the actual uh, output, the diagram, is a standardized solution as opposed to unstandardized. If we uh, go over here and look now at our uh, output, you can see that um, you know, now we have essentially the um, coefficients are uh, in standard, standard uh, form, uh, standardized form as opposed to unstandardized. So um, there you go. So that's um, you know that's kind of a, a quick overview of just running a basic uh, CFA model. If it turns out you know if it's the case where you have uh, missing data, um, another um, you know let's say that uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to open up a data file with uh, missing data. So I've actually got about three or four cases with missing data that I've just kind of created for this demonstration. So I'm going to uh, pull that up and. Um, and I'm going to rerun the analysis. So if I go to uh, estimation and estimate right here, if I leave it as maximum likelihood uh, and run the analysis, and right now it's still set it as unstandardized, so I'll just go ahead, I'm just going to re-report it. I'm just going to remove this for the time being and uh, re-estimate. So there's, it's been estimated and uh, you'll see that now, you know, the sample size previously, by the way, was um, was uh, 1,159, and uh, now when we've run our analysis, you can see that we have 
1,155. So essentially what happened is, is that uh, the procedure um, carried out um, the analysis using list-wise deletion. Um, if I select instead to uh, run my analysis using maximum likelihood with missing values, if I click on that, and look at our output, you'll notice that now our sample size is 1,159, and that's because it's performing the analysis using full information maximum likelihood. So it's basically maximizing the information from uh, the data set without cutting out a, a complete um, uh, case just because there's missing data on any of the uh, individual um, um, uh, indicator variables. So uh, that concludes this demonstration.